ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this edition of Unpopular Review, Loki edition. I am the god of beards, sometimes bad guy Jack, and usually there's the three of us. There's Caden, and then there's Vic, but I have a special guest, C, the superior, and she is here to talk Loki. That's what yes. she's doing, that's her signature. Um, <laughs> what did you think of episode three, before we break down or break it all down? Okay, so, confession, I had to binge watch episode two and episode three, you know, right after each other. And there's, a, I have a lot of thoughts. I think that sure. this episode was more filler for me than maybe the first two. Um, I guess it's their way to introduce us and maybe get a, give us more of a feel to um, Loki's other half, I'll call her the, <laughs> the female Loki. Um, so maybe that's why they kind of took us out of the element that we've kind of come accust accustomed to in the first two episodes, you know, him being at the, the time variant yeah. location. Um, time jail. <laughs> yeah. Being me in time jail. <laughs> so I thought it was interesting that they brought up the, um, like the little bit of the lore of Loki. Cause um, there was this one scene where he was like singing in like, I don't Asgardian. know what language yes. it was. Was it Asgardian, Asgardian or? Asgardian, yes. I wanted to actually, yes. And I thought that was a really cool, and I know we're going to digest it more into that. We're going to get more into that part. But I thought that was really cool because um, uh, if you saw uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was cool when we saw Nemo and he was, you know, trying to, you know, he's busting out the dance moves. And then you see Loki mm -hmm. having a good time, having a drink, like my girl right there having a drink. And he was Facts. singing Asgardian. And he said, then. <laughs> Drink, then she, I forgot the lyrics. I wish I remembered, but that was such a fun part. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that scene. I also enjoyed that they dropped a little Loki nugget in there that Loki, the lore of Loki, he was very, you know, sexually fluid. Like sometimes he would be yeah. a woman, sometimes he would be a man, sometimes he would be a horse. And I thought it was interesting that they chose to make this iteration of Loki a woman because that's, you know, very keeping with the, the, the lore of Loki. Yes. And they also gave us a little little dab of Loki is confirmed bisexual in this universe, which is interesting to know and cool to know because he's had some moments in the lore that he was, you know, doing a little dibbling and dabbling <laughs> with everything. So yeah, and, and, I, and I thought that was actually really surprising when they actually confirmed. Cause like, I, I remember talking to a coworker and uh, we were talking about Loki a little bit and we were talking, we were exchanging like, you know, uh, our feelings about, it. but it was like, yeah, you know, I think the variant's going to be a female because they're talking about it being, uh, was it ginger neutral, not neutral, um, fluid, like you mentioned. And then you have Loki who even says like, cause she teases, she said, any princess or prince? And he says, uh, no, I dabbled with both. Like, mm -hmm. I think you have. I like how you did it in like such an elegant way too. Like I was just like with the T with the pink. Yeah. Like, yeah, classy man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was, that was cool. I mean, it, mm -hmm. so would right. this make him the first confirmed, you know, bisexual or member of the LGBTQ community of the Avengers? What I think it might be. I don't think anyone else. It could, I, I would say in the movie lore, yeah. right now, I would say, unless I'm not really putting it, like, not really thinking. But yeah, I'm talking about the okay. MCU. Yeah, and I'm just thinking it's just really him at the moment. Like, I really think it's him. Like, confirmed-wise, like, some people, you know, they have their little speculations and stuff. But I feel like he's the oh, first Captain America. Really. <laughs> yeah, oh, God. <laughs> Captain America and Bucky? Yeah, they're oh, the one. God. They haven't, you know, outed themselves as of yet. Yeah, but they're, the they're, first they're confirmed. Friends. Yeah, they're totally friends. I, I, I saw the, the, the view you guys had, and I just said, oh, my I God. ship it. I ship Captain America and Bucky, even though I do want Captain America for myself. But I, I'm, I'm not a, a selfish lover, so he can have Bucky on the weekends. But uh, <laughs> I think that Loki <laughs> might be our first confirmed um, bisexual Avenger in the MCU, which is really cool. Um, especially them, you know, deciding to air this episode during Pride Month, which is another cool thing. <laughs> wow, yeah, I didn't even like put two and two together. Like, yeah, that mm -hmm. was that's something. Talk about timing. Facts. Um, but what did you think about the this other Loki? How did you feel about her? So, you know, one of the things I was asking lately, I was like, 
I'm cool with there being a female Loki. I, I uh, did a little research, not even like a thorough research, but I just wanted to see in the comics, like, what does she look like? And I was like, why is she blonde and not have the black yes. hair? I, I felt like that was something, that was a detail that I felt, because everything else is kind of on point. Like, I, I love the comic book fans who are real, real fans. So, like, they were mentioning, like, the crown she wears. You know, how one horn is there and the other's broken. That's really good detail. But I, I was just trying to be, I was, I was like, why is she blonde? I just didn't. And granted, you could just say they could take liberties here and whatnot. But I felt like it would have been cool if she had kept the black hair. But it's cool. I think and one of the things I really liked about this episode was the complex relationship that these two had. So there's moments where they wanted to kill each other. And then they had these moments where they wanted to know more about each other. Like, like you, like. I feel like you want to say something here. Go yeah, ahead. let's talk about these moments because some of them were giving you like sexual tension moments. And I'm like, what's going on here? Is he about to have like a love fest with himself? Like it was giving oh, sexual was tension. And I read this article when the first Loki episode came out and it was, I forget the name of the, it was a website, but yes. they were saying how the MCU purposely makes their characters like asexual. There's no like sexual tension in these movies. And I was saying, okay, well, it's a comic book movie. It's not really supposed to be sexual. But the author of the article made this argument that, okay, these are PG-13 movies and, you know, TV shows. So yeah. theoretically, there could be, like, you know, a love interest and, you know, a fade to black as, you know, something romantic were to take place. But they said, um, with a few exceptions, I think one being, like, Iron Man one, and I think one other one, there's right. been like no romance really in the MCU. Not really. And they were saying how Loki has become like this almost um, cult sexual like icon almost because people go crazy over Loki. <laughs> like, know that. really? Really? Yes. Luke, Loki is like almost his, uh, he might be like more of a sexual icon than Thor because the way like these like, you know, emo <laughs> girls are the fanning over Loki, it's crazy out here. But. I, I, but I think it's a style. I think it's the style. The black hair, the the don't like the bad boy vibe. That mm -hmm. he, he's the bad boy. So and a lot of a lot of and a lot of girls love the bad boy. So that, I think yeah. that's what it is. But I, I do it's interesting you mentioned that and the stuff I didn't really think about because it's like, you know, you see like romance is kinda like and I guess in a small small uh, dose love. Like, so like in some of these MCU movies, you know, the guy gets the girl and you know they hug, kiss, blah blah blah. But here mm -hmm. I see what you mean. It's like there's this 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 fun. It's almost like a sexual frustration. Yes. Like they're like I, it's very potent. And even yeah. in one scene, she had like her her hand like around his neck, like caressing him. And he was like, "Are you trying to glamour me or something?" It was like very sexual. And I'm like, "What's going on here? What is this, what is the vibe?" What she tried <laughs> to do was enchant him. So she tried to get into his mind, but because his mind is so strong, he was able to avoid. So in the but the caress. The yeah, it looks that way, but that's if you look in the beginning of this episode, she mm -hmm. uh, did that with the the security guard, that that black security guard where they were having margaritas. But that's how he, that's how she enchants him. So she grabs him by like the uh, temple, does mm -hmm. something like this. It's almost like a massage. But yeah. really, I think we should we gotta watch it again because it's it definitely gave more of a sexual vibe with Loki. I don't know if it was like the the amount of time they spent on the scene because they let it linger. It wasn't like a little quick touch to the forehead. It was like a no, like yeah. five seconds of us looking at them, looking at each other. <laughs> and you know, and, and, and still to keeping on on topic about this, there's a spot where um, she said something like, "You only saved me because you need me to." Because you know he has the, um, the time pad, and she said, "Oh, the only reason you saved me so I can charge it because you don't know how." And mm -hmm. he said, "Maybe," but the way he said "maybe" almost like maybe there's more. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a tease, like. Loki, like uh, such a tease. Yeah, Loki. You know, Loki. Uh, Loki want to play with himself. You know, like, <laughs> I, I just couldn't help but uh, say that. I just, uh, I don't know if it should be edited out, but uh, Loki. Loki <laughs> Leave it in. Leave it in, Kaden. Leave it in. <laughs> I, but this episode, it's funny you say that. So I feel like episode three to me was like kind of one of my favorites at the moment because it seemed like one and two was slow for me, but the Ooh. Disney Plus. A lot of these Disney Plus shows are like that. Um, mm -hmm. Cheap plug, if you watch some of the um, go in the archives, you can catch WandaVision and Falcon Winter Soldier. Um, but this felt slow, but I felt like this one felt kind of MCU because there was the, 
I love the action. I'm easily distracted by action. And, you know, like there was a lot of this, like Loki was, Loki was getting some licks in and I kind of forgot Loki mm -hmm. can do some stuff because half the time you see Loki, yes. you know, when he fights Thor, he's always getting thrown around. Uh-huh. But here you see him do a spinning back kick. He got the knife. You know, he's doing all this stuff. And and Lady Loki or um oh God, I'm, I'm making up a Lady Loki. <laughs> I like Lady Loki. Lady Loki. I like Lady Loki too. Like that sounds dope. When we changed the name, I was like, I, I really like Lady Loki more. But You're um, right. she he he's definitely giving more of a capable vibe in this series. Like he definitely seems more capable, more powerful. We yeah. get to see more of like the stuff that he can actually do. Like, you know, he's freezing, um, you know, Those structures as they fall yeah. into the ground. Yeah. I thought that was cool. Um, but at the end of the episode, I believe they were trying to make it to some ship or something to the get arc. Yeah, yeah. to the arc to get off the planet. And at the end of the episode, it's almost like it was destroyed or something. Like, what did you oh, think of the ending? My goodness. So it, it it's hilarious now uh thinking about that because you know, they, 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 they're on the train. They get kicked off the train. Um, now they're sitting there saying, we're doomed. This this meteorite is going to hit this moon, and we're dead. You killed us. Female Loki, Lady Loki is telling Loki, uh, you killed us. Loki comes up with the plan like, yo, we got to get, let's go to the Ark. And now mm -hmm. they're sitting there saying, and the thing about them, now, and at this point now they have a trust. They, they've made a um, truce, and they say, I trust you, you trust me. They, they've uh, both explained, uh, well, Loki more. he was explaining more of his background, talking about his mother, which I thought was a really good scene. I wanted to um, put, some, uh, put some eyes on that because I thought that was really cool and seeing how he got emotional about that. Because Loki, he's, he, he, he wants to be dark. He wants to be, he kind of got that uh, 2005 My Chemical Romance vibe. Yes, where, very you know, emo. That's why the girls are going wild for him. Oh, yeah. He but he does have a soft spot for his mother. Like, oh, that was established. Like, even, like, in Thor 2, that's his mama. He's a mama's boy, for sure. Oh, absolutely. But the scene where they're trying to get to the arc, and they're running, and they're trying to evade the, 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 the police or the security and then people in their way they're pushing and they're fighting and they got their backs against each other and just hitting everything that moves i really mm -hmm. like that thing because it was so it was almost like i'm mean, going to use urgent like there was urgent for them to get on that ship or um mm -hmm. the arc and to see it blow up you just see how defeated especially lady loki she she walks off she, mm -hmm. she she's pretty much defeated and loki can just only look up and just be and i feel like with loki in this scene he's almost like Am I, gonna, am I about to die again? Like, <laughs> because you know, he saw in the video when he got choked out by it. Yeah. So now he's sitting there saying, again? It's a very interesting ending to the episode. It's kind of like a cliffhanger. Like, how are we going to get, or how are they going to get off of this planet? Um, I can't wait till next Wednesday so we can see what happens next. I do want to mention this one last part before we do go off. Did, did you find it interesting when Lady Loki mentioned um, when she did? Uh, and chance the, the security guard, the young security guard, and had to go back and uh, to find a certain memory for her and pointed out that she's from Earth. Because you remember... Oh, yes! Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, yes. So all of the other variants, are, well, the, the, the time, you know, security team, whatever the heck they're called, <laughs> they <laughs> believe that they've always been there. Yes. But apparently that's not the case, which calls into question... What are these three lizard gods that are the, the, the timekeepers? Because they, you know, according to Lady Loki, aren't being 100% truthful with these people that are working on their behalf. So this very interesting. And I wonder if there will be some type of paradigm shift later in the season when Owen Wilson's character realizes that he had a life before this. That will be interesting. I can't wait to see that. I know. I can't wait to see it. And I got to say, uh, see, I can't wait to see you back here next week. Um, it's going to be great. And maybe there'll be more of us. Who even knows at this point? Right. But, we might have uh, Michelle and everyone, the whole Destiny show. I know. I know the, the Destiny 4. But tonight, you got the Destiny 2, the 2 of Destiny. And I hope you enjoyed this review. I'm the God of Biz. She's see the Superior. And we say, have a good one, folks. Bye. See ya.